Not that way, cowboy. No, I wanted to go that way. This is Striker Avenue. You found me again. Wow, the wow. That's that's what that transition does, huh? Can't fake being on Xbox with that kind of transition. So this is all about how you know what people have been complaining a lot. You know, this year, last year, however you want to call it, complaining about one game not living up to the expectations of another. <sighs> these games as a service kind of thing that we've been bombarded with the last uh, couple of years here or there uh, evolve being the poster child of what not to do before you even show your game and uh, how not to market it to the point where you know the company so believes in its gameplay that it it's making it free to play uh, not quite, it hasn't come to consoles yet, but I mean, it had a million people playing it online, uh, on the PC, which is something uh, that you probably haven't seen since the game launched, quite honestly. And uh, so yeah, all you see is people complaining about, you know, this and that, and you know what? Uh, you know, these games aren't your uncle's games anymore. Uh, we, we definitely are in a different era. Of video games, the the old days of a game coming out and selling, uh, you know, five hundred thousand copies or a million copies, and that's all it needs to do. Um, you know, aside from the independent side of things, uh, that that doesn't exist anymore. I mean, if you're a AAA game publisher, you pretty much need to put all your eggs in one basket. And uh, unfortunately, that caused the demise of a number of studios, you know, where the game just wasn't as big as people wanted it to be. And I guess you could argue that we're kind of the cause of that. That uh, us gamers themselves, you know, we're the ones that wanted better graphics and better everything. And, and um, ultimately, that started to make video games, you know, end up costing, uh, you know, 30, 40 million. And, uh... And the AAA publishers, you know, like Rockstar and whatnot, you know, they had to make games that were a hundred million dollars last generation. And I'm I'm talking about the seventh generation of consoles, the 360 and the PlayStation 3. You know, I mean, a hundred million dollars for for something like Max Payne 3. Um, you know, it's and that's even more for uh, obviously Grand Theft Auto 5. Think well. What did they say the budget on that was like maybe two hundred million? Now, when you see a game like that, you think, well, you know, it's it's single player is really deep, really engaging. There's a lot of stuff to do, and the multiplayer really is nearly its own game in itself. But uh, but you know what? Like I said, you know, these these aren't your uncle's games. Uh, you might be asking, well, don't you mean these aren't your daddy's games? It's like, well, no, that they're, they're not your uncle's games. And you could be, you could argue the fact that, well, the uncle should be about the same age as the dad, right? Well, he could be older or he could be younger. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, we get games a lot different, like, uh, uh, stainless, uh, games. You know, when they did the Kickstarter for Carmageddon, uh, Resurrection, you know, on PC. And, uh, their Kickstarter reached the goals to, to, in order to produce... Uh, console versions of Carmageddon, the version that they were making, and eventually that turned out to be Carmageddon Max Damage. Uh, they rebranded it because honestly, Carmageddon Resurrection didn't get that great of reviews. And uh, but it's nice that you know we live in a time where someone can do a Kickstarter for a game like this, and and we get to play it. I mean, seriously, the last Carmageddon game was Nintendo sixty four, and Wasteland two. I mean. Uh, you know, this exists, you know, Brian Fargo, the guy that, you know, created the original Wasteland and eventually had troubles with EA with the, uh, the licensing, uh, you know, then ended up creating Fallout, uh, with some other people and, well, eventually they would end up selling off the property and, uh, I don't know exactly why they would necessarily did, but they did, uh, and they sold it off and obviously that went gangbusters later on and, 
lo and behold, Brian Fargo, you know, saw that and learned from it and figured he'd go back and ask for the rights to uh, his original Wasteland property and got him back. Uh, he probably had to pay for him. But uh, and then he made Wasteland 2 and... And there's other stuff like Elite Dangerous. I mean, it's not No Man's Sky, but I mean, space exploration and and uh, cargo. I mean, this is the closest thing, you know, uh, the new generation is going to have to uh, free space and, and some of those other uh, games back in the day where hauling cargo and stuff was was the norm and. You got games like Earthlock, you know, something that us Xbox users just got. I mean, it was a free game for the first month uh, that it even released. You know, Xbox has been doing that a few times where the a new game that comes out is actually free for that, that first 15 days or the first 30 days. Um, you know, for all its users, as long as you download it then. And I'm uh, kind of encouraging on, on playing that. And, and, I mean, look at this. You know, now we got Star Trek Universe. I mean, the thing was... Uh, Star Trek Online, sorry. Uh, I was thinking of DC Universe. Oh, I mean, we got that too. You know, I mean, Star Trek Online has been going on for what, like five seasons now? You know, five years before it eventually shows up on an Xbox One. And uh, I think all that's pretty exciting. I think it's pretty cool. Sure, PlayStation users might have gotten to use After or play some of these games like DC made it my life's work to reunite Universe the Online. They got to play that earlier, of course, uh, by a number of years. I lived among them. But that's because Microsoft really wasn't warming up to the idea of the free-to-play games. But I mean, now we got stuff like Smite on Xbox One and uh, and Neverwinter. You know, so you know this is a pretty unique time where. You know, you got people like like me that are talking about these Planets old games and and how great they were, and uh, and you guys are getting to experience you know some of these games uh, like Star Trek and and DC and uh, you know they're they're pretty viable uh, ways of of entertaining you and quite honestly they're in many ways better than the games that we grew up with. So I just think it's, uh, you know, games coming out today are, are a bit more complicated. And unfortunately, we lost a lot of stuff. But, you know, we have a lot of independent studios out there that are creating fresh and uh, more entertaining games, in a sense. You know, for $5 and $10. And sure, everyone complains about the iOS stuff. You know, that they weren't real games and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Some companies... Uh, really have up the quality. Uh, for their lost world. You know, like Infinity Blade and and uh, there's there's some others. I don't know the iOS market as well, but uh, I've heard there's actually some really high quality games that you can get and download on your phone for uh, free for a dollar for five dollars, and uh, and they're actually worthwhile experiences. You know, something that. You couldn't say the first couple of years that they started to uh, proliferate the, uh, you know, the gaming industry. I mean, there's an actual reason to play those games. I mean, you can actually be generally entertained with some of those iOS games. And we even see different games like Hitman where, you know, you think, okay, let me pay my $60 and let me get your content. You know, now it's, you know, Hitman's gone kind of the subscription route, almost in a sense. Uh, you know, releasing, you know, sure, you could pay for everything up front, but releasing, you know, a new uh, story mission or a story location, you know, every couple of months. So you got content basically throughout the rest of the year, new content throughout the year, and everything is balanced really well. They even gave us a free thing where you're taking down some guy in a movie studio. Uh, it uses one of the existing maps, of course, but I mean, it was free. It was, and they got the, uh, the specialized hits that you got 48 hours to take out people like Gary Busey and, uh, and some other ones. Um, the exclusive targets, you know, that's, that's kind of cool. It's, it, I don't really have the, uh, fortitude to be putting the game in every day to find out when those things are launching. I usually end up missing the guy by a few hours, if not a whole day. But uh, it's it's interesting, and the developer is more excited about Hitman, and it seems like the people actually playing their games are giving the feedback that they kind of like this. Even though personally I hated the fact that I didn't get my full game all up in one, 
you know, package, but uh, it's hard to argue if, if other people are liking it. I can't really get mad at it. I can tell you how I don't like it. I can tell you how, uh, you know, just the way it is, but some people like the fact that, you know, one location comes out and it's got a couple of missions and they basically have a month to kind of play around and and check things out before the next thing comes out. They like that. They, you know, if anything, are encouraging the developer for it. So this could be a completely different change for, for Hitman. Or, uh, you know, who knows what Season 2 is going to bring. Is it going to bring a brand new retail game? Uh, or is it just going to be all add-ons to this existing engine? Um, you know, who knows? But I think it's actually pretty exciting. And, and that's the main thing. The main thing is... You know, get out there and, and enjoy some stuff. I mean, sure, it, it might not be the prettiest looking. It might not be the most in-depth. Um, you know, there's a lot of horse games out there, walking simulators, um, and they might, they may or may not be the exact same thing. But uh, but there's a lot of stuff out there. Go and experience it. Something like Among the Sleep, where you're a little two-year-old. Yeah, sure, you can beat the game in a few hours, but the same thing with Gone Home. You know. Uh, you can beat that in a, under two hours as well, but that's a really good experience. But uh, but yeah, get out there, check out some new games, and uh, keep watching Striker Venio for more info on on what you should be playing. No, I don't do that. But hey, uh, thanks for watching. Take it easy. And stop whining, jeez.